In the fugue, I'm intrigued by some of the differences, which might seem slightly pedantic at first, but I think are very revealing. Uh, the ending which we've inherited in many modern editions uh, is where the fugue sort of runs out of steam and you just get an, an almost playful throwaway chord at the end. The addition of the pedal was my choice there. Um, but we look at a copy by Kellner. Now, Kellner was a Bach student and a faithful copyist of Bach's music. And Kellner ends it thus. So, in other words, the bottom C pedal going right to the end and the last bar being filled with an entire chord. So, quite a different conclusion. You might think, depending on your view, that this is a, a more authoritative conclusion to such a, a large-scale toccata. I think it reveals something important, uh, and that is that copyists uh, could uh, project their own view on things, uh, their own take on things, with or without a steer uh, of the Meister. Um, this idea of an ur text or one authoritative, uh, a conclusive text is a 19th century dream. Something as well that we've clung on to in the 20th and 21st century, but it's not really part of the 18th century musical culture. Bach himself changed his view as we went along. Uh, and so as performers, you know, as we perform from Urtext editions and uh, earnestly argue over differences of minute or sometimes quite significant differences, uh, I'm not sure it's wholly relevant because this was, if you like, an organic, uh, evolving musical culture uh, and one which to some degree seemed to eschew the idea of Urtext. And so the performer must keep an open mind, must look at what is available and ultimately make the decision and take the authority for him or herself. And that is part of the expression of the music of J.S. Bach.